Hey folks, I'm Mark Ryan. This is Super Review, and this is the 7 Hertz Sal Notes Dioko. No, I'm not speaking in tongues. That's the name of this I am, and it is notable for, I think, a couple of pretty good reasons. Number one, this is the first planar magnetic driver I am that has been tuned in collaboration with Critical. That's right, you see his face over here. Fellow I am reviewer tuned this I am in collaboration with 7 Hertz. And that's his first planner. So that's pretty cool. The other thing that is pretty unique about this IM is that this is the first, to my knowledge, planar driver IM to be sold for under a hundred bucks. Okay, it's 99 bucks. It's basically exactly a hundred bucks, but this is the cheapest planar driver out there. And that's pretty interesting. And so now the Dioko here, it's coming from the same company that brought us the 7 Hertz Timeless, which was an IM that a lot of people thought was a pretty standout value at 220 bucks. So here in the Dioko, we've got a 14 millimeter planar driver, just like in the Timeless. And it's coming in at 99 bucks. And to be honest, I think I like this one better. In fact, I know I like this one better. Um, and we're going to talk about that. So for the past couple of weeks, I've had the Dioko on hand, spent a lot of time listening to it and comparing it with some other IMs uh, around the price range that are also going for a similar sound signature. And we'll talk about what that sound signature is. Um, to really just kind of figure out how does this thing stack up to some of my favorites at the price range. And I don't know, we could probably talk about how it stacks up against some other stuff because this thing is, I gotta say at 99 bucks, a pretty, pretty impressive set. So with that out of the way, a shout out to Linsoul for sending this product in for review. I do have a link to them in the description down below if you want to check it out. And otherwise just my usual, my usual spiel. If you watch all my, my other reviews, this is a live stream like those. So if you have questions about the Dioko, anything else we talk about, please do leave it in the live chat. And at the end of the review, we'll have some, some time for back and forth conversation. And hopefully I can answer all of your questions about the Dioko. Uh, with that out of the way, um, anything else to say? I don't think so. Let's go ahead and dive back to the table and start talking about, well, we'll talk about the physical stuff. We'll talk about what's in the box, we'll talk about the physical stuff, and then we'll talk about the sound and how it compares to some other stuff, just to set your expectations. So, what comes inside the box? First of all, this is the packaging, uh, nice and simple, no uh, skeevy weeby stuff on there, so appreciate that. Otherwise, um, fairly simple box. Actually, what's interesting about this box is that it was actually a little bit too small for what we have over here, which is this carry case that it comes with, which is frankly, I think pretty insane that it comes with something like this at the $99 price point. I've never seen a carrying case this large and impressive uh, at a hundred bucks. So that alone is pretty impressive. Never mind the driver technology that we have going on here, but there you go. Obviously this is a pretty large case. This is larger than I would typically use for, you know, this is definitely not pocketable, but um, I don't know. It's, it's certainly nice that they included that and it does have pretty clever uh, implementation of a seven in there for seven hertz. By the way, what is Sal Notes? I have no idea what a sound note is. But there you go. Um, other than that, you get a set of ear tips. In fact, you get a couple different sets of ear tips, and I would pull them in to frame a little bit closer, but I don't know that there's a whole lot to look at. What I will say as that one rolls away is that there are essentially three different types of ear tips. And um, here we've got, you know, two kind of basic silicone ear tips, the slight differences in the bore size. And you can see also the dome shape is a little bit different. And why that's important is that just having different shaped uh, ear tips is usually a big contributor to fit and comfort. And well, mostly it comes down to fit security. So that's cool. But then the other thing that's interesting is that they include this one set, just this one set and medium size of uh, this type of, of, of ear tip. And what's different about this is that it does have somewhat of a wide bore, um, but the silicone on here is a little bit grippier than typical, which I think I actually quite like. Now you notice I don't have that on there. We'll talk about that in a bit, but um, it, it's certainly a very wide selection of ear tips. I appreciate that. These tips are pretty good. Um, I don't know why these things are all these colors though. These things are kind of goofy colors, if I'm honest. Um, here on the Dioko wasn't so bad, but we'll, there's another there's another Sal Notes I am um, that will be showing on this channel probably soon. Or actually, I, I think I posted about it in the community post last night that uses these same tips, and I think it looks it looks silly. Anyway, let's go to the I am itself. Start talking about the build quality here, because otherwise that's what you get inside the package. We'll start with this cable, which is actually I think a pretty nice cable. 
um, punch in on it so you can take a look at what it is. It's a simple weave. It's got kind of like this, I don't know, almost like a foil kind of style to it. I've seen this on other IM cables. Usually they're kind of more premium IM cables. And so again, uh, also really impressed to see this on a sub $100 I am. Um, good behavior. It's got a nice weight to it, but it's also pretty thin. And um, that's a thing that I generally appreciate. And as you'll see, Rody wraps quite well. Uh, we've also got a pretty small Y split up here. Punch it on that so you can take a look. Um, very small, simple Y split, which I appreciate. Have a very, very functional chin cinch. Like it is staying completely put. Um, and then of course you've got your preformed ear hooks up top and they terminate into your standard two pin connectors. So if for any reason you don't like this cable, you could replace it, but I gotta be honest, I think this is uh, uh, not just a perfectly fine cable. I think this is certainly a better than average cable. Maybe the only quibble here would be with the aesthetics of it. Um, and mostly it's just kind of how it mashes or meshes with the aesthetics of the ear pieces themselves, which I guess we'll jump into talking about. If I'm perfectly honest, take a look at these IMs and, and make a decision for yourself. Do you think that these things are attractive? Um, because I think it's gonna be pretty polarizing. In my opinion, it's not a bad looking IM per se, but it is weirdly gaudy. It is weirdly, I don't know. Everything here is really, really well made. Uh, don't get me wrong. Like we've got full metal shells. Give it the clink test. Uh, and then this panel out here is, I'm pretty sure a glass, like it's not a plastic. So also uh, uh, certainly a nice material. Everything here feels really nice. It's just aesthetically, um, I don't know. It, it's certainly different. Um, if I'm perfectly honest, I don't love it. I don't love the aesthetics at all. Uh, again, I think it is really quite well made. Now we'll get back to seven Hertz, but I do wish that I don't know. They had someone else designing their IMs. There's something here to be liked. Like I don't mind the the purple and the the glass look. Like I love the way that this thing reflects light. That is actually pretty pretty fun. Mostly, I think I just don't like the oval shape of it. But I don't know. That's uh, that's gonna be a, a thing of taste. You might completely disagree with me, and you know what? You're not wrong. Um, other than that, what to say about these earpieces? I mean, we'll talk about the fit. I did mention I'm not using the stock ear tips. Uh, and I'm here using Asla Sednas. And the reason for that is the same reason I typically will use this tip is it does give me a little bit of extra reach on the nozzle, which I find improves the fit security of this IM. So the fit on this thing is actually not bad. Let me um, give you a little bit of a fit test demonstration there so you can take a look at what the Dioko looks like in the head of uh, a, a guy on YouTube, I guess. Um, but yeah, the, the ingress egress is actually really easy. You can see that plug it in. It's maybe a little bit on the large side, but it doesn't feel especially large in my ears. Um, comfort is actually really good. Like it's nice and smooth on the inside. Let's see if I can pull this other side in here so you can kind of get a sense for oh, covering it up. I should have thought about this before, but yeah, it's, um, oh, that's awkward. Uh, it's nice and smooth on, on the inside, which makes it for a very comfortable fit. The only issue that I do have fairly small issue uh, is just in terms of fit security. So most of the fit security, okay, 100% of the fit security is going to come from the tip creating a seal with the ear canal, okay? And because this body is relatively large, you know, I'm gonna stop showing it to you like that. I'm just gonna show you two uh, here on the table. Because the body is relatively large, um, basically this, this thing was gonna fill up your concha, likely. Uh, and, and the length of the nozzle is not especially short or anything like that, but I did find that adding a little bit of extra length to it with these longer ear tips helped me get a more secure fit. Um, certainly a lot easier. I was able to get a decent fit with these stock tips up here, but for my ears, I definitely preferred having the slightly longer ear tips. If you have some other ear tips that you might try, uh, if you don't happen to have as a said nose, would be something like spin fits. Spin fits are also a little bit longer than average and they would help out in that same way. So build quality stuff, again, quality wise, this thing's actually really impressive for the price. Aesthetically, I, I don't love it. And then fit security is, it's okay. It's certainly not bad, but it's just okay. Um, I, was, I was able to get through a couple of nights sleep with these things stuck in my ears. And that's a pretty good test if I'm perfectly honest. So with that out of the way, let's talk about the sound. But before we talk about the sound as it is now, I, th I think it is worth talking a little bit about this filter fiasco. 
I've, I've coined that term, but um, this is not a thing that most people will have to worry about, but I feel like I do have to talk about it because I experienced it and I've addressed it. So um, some of the early units of the Dioko shipped out with the wrong filters installed. And the result of that was an IM that just sounded a lot brighter and thinner than it should have. Um, the, 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 the critical and the, the team at seven Hertz, they discovered the issue relatively early. They sh sent out kind of like this, this kit so that people could repair, uh, replace the filters on their own, which is not the best of solutions, but it certainly worked. I got my filters in, I did the operation successfully. It wasn't too hard. Um, and I was able to measure my IMs kind of before and after to confirm that I correctly fix them. So fairly confident that what I'm hearing here is going to be representative of what you're going to hear there. Uh, and again, like they discovered this issue relatively early. So you probably will not have to worry about that. The one thing that I will say is you don't, I'm pretty confident. I'm confident you will not have to worry about the issue if you buy it from Linsole. This is not an ad for Linsole. They don't sponsor me or anything like that, but they are, as far as I know, kind of like the official retailer of this IM. There are, I have heard some other retailers in like Taobao that maybe are not completely in tune with what's going on with this filter fiasco. And so it might be a bit of a crapshoot if you buy it from them. So just kind of a heads up on that. But with that out of the way, let's go back to the table and start talking about how this thing sounds. And like I typically do, We'll talk, we'll start by talking about the general sound signature. So I've already said up front that I like this better than Timeless. A lot of that's gonna come down to the tonal preferences, okay? And if your tonal preferences aren't mine, you might not agree here. But I'm gonna say right now, I definitely like the tonal balance of this thing uh, better than Timeless. So the Timeless for context, it was basically kind of a, a mild V-shaped sound signature, pretty decently tuned. Uh, and what Critical did as he worked with 7 Hertz on this is he tuned this more toward his Critical neutral sound signature. Now, if you've never heard a Critical neutral sound signature before, I gotta be honest, on my opinion, it's actually a little bit on the bright side. And that's what we got here. Um, in fact, the Dioko, I would say, I would say overall, this is kind of a lean neutral tune. Right? It's very much tuned to Critical's neutral target. Um, like I said, it can be a little bit bright, but unlike, if you're used to some of his other collabs, because he's done a lot of these tuning collabs, usually what he'll do is neutral with bass boost, okay? This thing has a little bit of bass boost in it for sure, but the bass boost here is effectively, it's like below 80 hertz. And so a lot of music really does not have a lot of sound in that range. And so I think the, the, the effect of that is that this versus Critical's typical um, tuning is a lot leaner and a lot brighter. And that's with the replaced tuning filters, okay? Uh, you can imagine what it sounded like before I replaced the tuning filters. So yeah, you just get this kind of lean neutral sound. It's got good extension on either end. Like it does have that sub bass extension and it does also have um, a, a somewhat exaggerated upper treble extension. Um, and it, that's stuff that you're going to hear, assuming your music plays those frequencies. So that's the general tune here that we're talking about with the Dioko. Let's talk about what do I like about the sound here on this earphone? Okay. Um, of the 14 millimeter planar driver. So if we're talking about the, the, the seven Hertz timeless, we've got the wrapped go hook. We've got the tin hi-fi P1 max, the let short S12. And now the Dioko. I think these are all essentially using the same driver. Of the bunch, this is my favorite tuning. I prefer more of a mid-range tuning. Like the other ones are kind of mid ACV shaped sound signatures. They're more about the contrast, less about the mid-range. The Dioko, in my opinion, by far has the cleanest mid-range. It's got a good sense of micro contrast and texture in the vocals. And I guess the other ones kind of did that as well, but it's just better accentuated here on this set. I just think that this tuning lends itself towards appreciating the, the minutia and kind of like the, the, the mid range. And again, like that vocal texture. Um, so really good there. The other thing that I really like about this set is that especially at a hundred bucks, but even you could really take away this hundred dollar caveat, but especially at a hundred dollars, the detail in the set is pretty incredible. Maybe insane. You could probably throw some other goofy, uh, goofy words at this. It really is though just stand out, stand out detail for the price range. Um, and spoiler for some of the later comparisons, like the technical performance on the set, in my opinion, versus the other sets in this price range is not really even close. So 
um, you'll, you'll, you'll see that as I bring in those competitors in a little bit. Um, but yeah, I think the, the detail in combination with that lean tuning that I described gives us kind of like an addicting kind of analytical sound. Um, again, you get that extended treble up top, which also gives you a nice realistic sense of weight on things like cymbal strikes and hi-hats and some of that high frequency percussion stuff where sets that roll off can sound a little bit dead up there. So that's what I like about the sound here on the Dioko, but there are some things as always that I don't love and that's worth talking about. So what are the things I don't love about this set? Let's talk about that tuning that I was just talking about, right? So while I definitely prefer the tuning of this set versus the other 14 millimeter planers, right? I prefer a more neutral bass versus the other ones. In my opinion, this one's, it's maybe a little bit too far. This one's pretty lean, if I'm perfectly honest. Um, it's It comes across sounding a little bit thin. Um, and, and the bass, basically what I'm talking about is the bass, right? The, the mid bass on this set is really just very, very lean. Uh, uh, and what that contributes to the sound is just that um, a, lot of, a lot of music just doesn't have a ton of weight on it when you listen to it on the Dioko. Now, if your music has bass that's gonna go into those really sub bass frequencies, again, like 80 Hertz and below, this is less of a problem. But if you're listening to a lot of, I don't know, like, you know, classic rock and stuff like that, where there's not electronic sub bass being injected into the music, um, sometimes it can come across, honestly, just a little bit flat and bodiless here on the Dioko. Uh, and then the other thing that's worth calling out is that the upper treble on this set, I mentioned it's boosted. I think it's a smidge too boosted. I don't find it fatiguing or anything like that. It just comes across slightly unnatural, um, a little bit unnatural emphasis there in the upper treble. Reminds me a lot of the Tin Hi-Fi P1, if that's a set that you've heard, but that's a relatively small complaint for me. Um, I would say to better, it's better to err on the side of having a little bit too much upper treble rather than too little, but I gotta, I gotta throw in some complaints. So that's that's what I feel about the Dioko. So those are my general thoughts there on the sound and the build quality of the Dioko, but it's gonna make this really most uh, informative if, is, is if, those are the words I wanted to say, is if I can bring in some other IMs for comparison. So that's what we're gonna do. I've actually got four IMs for this comparison. These are all somewhat neutral IMs that you can get for around a hundred bucks and. I thought, you know, might as well compare them to all these sets because these all kind of stand in uh, is, is some of my favorite sets at the price range. So what we've got, all right, here's the competitors. Of course, we've got the 7 Hertz Sal Notes Dioko, 99 bucks. It's a one times planar driver IM. It's the only planar in this bunch. Uh, we've also got the Dunu Titan S. This is a 1X dynamic driver set. Um, and it's actually a little bit cheaper. This one's about 80 bucks, uh, but I would consider it kind of in the similar price range. Uh, here we've got the Thea Audio Legacy 2, 99 bucks like the like the, the Dioko. Um, but this is actually a hybrid set. So you've got one dynamic driver plus one balanced armature. And then finally, we've got the Moondrop Stardust, which is effectively the same thing as the Moondrop SSR. I just think it looks cooler and it costs a little bit more and figured I'd might as well bring it into this comparison. Because to be honest, I love this set. Um, and worth describing how this set very differs from this set. So let's start by comparing these things in terms of the overall, just the sound signatures. And then we'll get into the technical details a little bit later. Um, again, the Dioko, this is a lean neutral. It's got well-extended treble, well-extended sub bass, very lean in the middle though. Um, you could even call this maybe a little bit on the bright side, although I didn't find it like, it's definitely not fatiguing or sharp or anything like that, but it does. It is a little bit on the bright side, and a lot of that's just going to contribute to that leanness. The Dunu Titan S, I would have also normally called this kind of like a bright neutral sound signature, although head to head with the Dioko, honestly, it actually sounds a little bit warm, which is interesting. Um, there's definitely a more mid bass body here on the Titan S, um, but in my opinion, it's still kind of a, a fairly analytical sound signature. Um, there you go. It does, but yeah, this one's got a little bit of bass emphasis. Uh, here with the Legacy 2, I would just call this one straight up neutral neutral. Uh, this is a, a, a very casual 
soft, easy listening, neutral sound signatures. Somewhat warm top end, maybe just because the treble is a little bit rolled off, but otherwise you basically have an etymotic style tune um, with a little bit of a cute bass bump at the end. Okay, so it does have maybe bass kind of on par with the Titan, um, but it's just a little bit versus the Titan. This one's a little bit tamer in the treble because it does roll off a little bit. And then finally, we've got the Moondrop Stardust which of the bunch is probably the, the most funky in terms of the tuning. I would say this is also bright neutral, but it's a little bit more, a little bit more askew of neutral than the others. Close enough though, that I think as you listen to it, you get used to it. Certainly I've uh, subjected myself to it plenty. Um, and then I would say that, you know, the, the, the high frequency percussion timbre of the set comes across a little bit off because of the, the weird treble on the set, but I don't know. I guess I didn't describe the, the, the tonality of this one too well. A part to say from it's kind of a bright neutral. It's a little bit funky in terms of like the vocal presence because of pretty elevated lower treble, but it does have a decent bit of mid bass to it. So if I were to rank these things in terms of just purely the tonality and sound signatures, I'd actually probably say I like the, the Legacy 2 the best. Um, followed up by the Titan and the Dioko with the Stardust is, is, is I think, the worst of the tonal, tonal balances. Um, so there you go. That's how I think these things stack up tonally. Well, let's talk about how they compare technically. Um, and let's start again with the Dioko. Like I mentioned, this really is no contest versus this bunch. It's just like next level technical performance. You just get a really pretty insane level of detail and texture and micro contrast throughout the, the, the frequency response. It's just really pretty fantastic. Bass is maybe the weak point here, definitely. You know, I, I get that. And we'll talk about some of these are, are pretty decent at the base. So that is a bit of a trade off there. Um, but I don't know. It, it really is no contest. Like this is, we'll rank them in a bit, but that's that's pretty far ahead. Uh, the Dunu Titan S, resolution wise, I would say it's actually, it's definitely a, a, a step behind the Dioko, maybe two steps behind the Dioko. It was kind of funny going back and forth between them because I didn't remember this thing sounding that far behind the Dioko, but in head to head comparisons, it was pretty, it was pretty obvious. Um, but the bass hits on the Titan S, I think, are a lot more satisfying than the bass hits over here. Um, uh, 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 really, really pretty decent bass on this set. And it's not a lot of bass, don't get me wrong. Like, this is still within the realm of neutral, um, but it's just got a really nice, satisfying body to the bass. Um, and then I would say that, you know, imaging is probably a little bit wider on this set versus the Dioko. Not that either of them is especially a, 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 an imaging or soundstage king or anything like that, but I would say it's a little bit wider here on the Titan S. Now the Legacy 2 technical performance is definitely its weakness, okay? Uh, I would say that the bass on this thing is actually pretty decent. Um, you got that dynamic driver and it's pretty well isolated, um, but the mid-range and treble just come across a little bit smoothed over, lacking a bit of detail. The treble rolls off, I think, pretty abruptly, and because of that, you really just don't get a good sense of air or texture in a lot of a lot of the frequency response. So that is an unfortunate aspect here. It's not awful, um, certainly a listenable set. Again, the bass on this is pretty satisfying, and that can the bass alone plus the tuning can can certainly get you by. But um, technical performance is not impressive here on the Legacy Two, and then finally the Moondrop SSR. I quite like. The, the technical performance on this. And despite the fact that tonally it's, it's I think, the worst of the bunch, um, technically it's a lot of fun. It's got a satisfying sense of weight, um, despite the uh, despite the, the bright tuning, which is kind of interesting. Uh, the, at the mid bass on this thing has actually got a really good body and punch to it. I would also say of the bunch, this is by far the best sense of imaging. So just that, that sense of separation, like positioning of sounds as distinct things, I think the, the Stardust does that best. It's not especially well extended or anything in the treble or the sub bass, but it doesn't really seem to suffer for it technically, which is interesting. So that's how they compare technically. Um, let's rank them. And again, this is not really any contest. The Dioko is far, far ahead. Next up, I would probably say is the Stardust um, with the Titan S is behind. And then the Legacy 4 is way down here. So that's how I'd rank them in terms of technical performance. Uh, and then finally, let's talk about how these things compare in terms of form factor. 
Um, I know we like to sometimes pretend that sound is the only thing that matters, but for me, that's definitely not the case. What the form factor is matters a lot to me as well. So the Dioko, in my opinion, I think this is an ugly I am. We'll punch on that so you can get a, get a sense for it. Again, nice build quality, uh, but aesthetically it, it misses the mark for me. Um, and then fit is actually pretty decent on it, despite the fact that it's kind of oddly shaped. So it does have that much going for it. Uh, the Dunu Titan S, let's punch in on that one while we talk about its form factor. Honestly, I think this is actually a pretty, pretty awesome build on a little IAM like this. You got an all metal shell like the Dioko. Um, it's got somewhat of a deep fitting nozzle as well. So that's something to be just mindful of is the nozzle does fit a little bit deeper on that set. Um, but fit security is actually really good. Build quality is really good. I love the cable, love the look. Very much impressed with the Titan S. Build quality here on the Legacy, and we'll punch in on that. I would say aesthetically, this is pretty decent. Not my favorite, it's pretty plain, if I'm honest. And this is the one set of the bunch that has plastic shells, but uh, this is also the one set of the bunch that fits me just like a glove. The, the fit here on the Legacy 2 is, for my ears, outstanding like one of the best fitting IMs I've ever worn no joke uh, it just means that it fits super secure um, if you're walking out you're walking talking if you're playing on stage or something like that th this is going to stay in place where these are going to be you know IMs you kind of got to fiddle with and reseat them every once in a while so that's pretty awesome and then of course I think the stock hardware the cable nice and simple but really really well done uh, and then the Stardust I'll punch it on that real quickly while we talk about this um, the Moondrop Stardust, I would say, is my favorite aesthetically. I just, I love how small and simple and cute it is. It is an all metal shell. Um, and it is hard to really appreciate just how small it is. Let's see if you can compare it. Like the Titan S is already a pretty small IM. And you can see the Stardust is just tiny in comparison. So aesthetically, this is my favorite. Uh, fit wise, I mean, it's certainly comfortable because it's tiny, but it's not the most secure fitting. I do have to play around a lot with ear tips. Uh, I think these are uh, soft ears, ear tips. I don't know. I have to play around with ear tips quite a bit to get a stable fit, but eventually I get there and um, there you go. So if I were to rank these in terms of the form factor stuff, honestly, I think the Legacy 4 or the Legacy 2 is my favorite just because of that fit stability. It's insane. Um, next up, honestly, I, I probably have to go with the Titan. As much as I love the aesthetics here on this set, this thing just fits me a little bit better, more stably. So I'll give that the advantage. And then down here at the bottom, unfortunately, is the Dioko. Again, it's not bad, nice build quality. It's just, uh, aesthetically, it's not It's not for me. So I think that's gonna do it for our comparisons here on these various 100-ish dollar neutral tuned IMs. But I do have to give a score to the 7 Hertz Cross Chronicle Sound Notes Dioko or Inoko Flow, something like that. So out of five stars, all right, given the, the, the sound, okay, is phenomenal, like mind blowing for the price range. The tuning is not going to appeal to everybody because it is a little bit on the lean side and the build quality is good, but I just don't love the aesthetics. Honestly, I think this is a really good set at a hundred bucks. I'm gonna give it a very, very solid four stars. If you haven't already heard an I am um, of outstanding technical performance. A hundred bucks to get a set with this level of technical performance is frankly pretty insane. And, and on that basis alone, I definitely think it's worth checking out. Now, again, the caveat, the warning about the tuning, it is a little bit on the lean side. Um, and then the aesthetics, you can make up your own mind about that. But I'm pretty impressed with the Dioko. And if you're interested in checking this thing out, I do have a link in the description down below where you can find it. Um, while you're down there, I suppose, hit the, the like button on this video if you liked it. Subscribe to the channel, ding the YouTube bell, and then I'll catch you on the next super review unless you're here live, in which case hang out. And let's, uh, let's chat about things while I roadie wrap this thing back up. What are we doing, folks? It is a Thursday evening. Hope we're doing well. <laughs>